Hello and welcome back everybody to The Wire Reef. Okay, a very long overdue update on the Waterbox 180. Okay, so it's the first week of February and my last update was about four months ago and I was getting another outbreak from a UV resistance strand of dinoflagellants. And literally the last three to four months, the tank has been looking pretty awful. Uh, that's, why, <laughs> that's why you haven't been seeing me around. You know, the tank was looking like shit and I was pretty much ready to call it and just take apart the system and, and just take a break from this ridiculous hobby. Uh, but thankfully, some of the actions that I took early on to battle uh, this tenacious strain of Dino has finally paid off. Uh, you know, if you've been following the channel, uh, then you would know that I've had Dino before, twice actually. And typically, they went away pretty uh, easily after you add in a UV sterilizer. But this UV resistant strain of Dino's, because they don't go into the water column at night, they're pretty much immune from the effects of UV. So let me tell you the steps that I took to fight this UV resistant strain of Dino's in case you're in a similar situation. So after I confirmed that I was dealing with large cell amphids, I did a bit of research and I found out that the best way to deal with them is to introduce biodiversity. Uh, specifically, people have had the greatest success by triggering a diatom bloom and diatoms apparently are really good at outcompeting these pesky UV resistant dinos. So the first step for me, because my nutrients had bottomed out, was to raise nutrients back to levels that uh, you know people usually have success with uh, battling uh, dinos with. So typically, 10 parts per million uh, for nitrates and 0.1 to 0.2 parts per million phosphates. I was dosing Brightwell uh, Neo Nitro or Neo Phos, uh, not sponsored post or anything like that. That's just the products that I had because you could get them in these like two liter containers. And it took me like forever to actually see levels of phosphates in my system. So I kid you not, there was like maybe for a good like five days or something, I was dosing about 100 mils of neophos per day, which is like a crap load of nitrates, uh, sorry, phosphates. And I was getting like no detectable readings 12 hours later. So something was just soaking up like nitrates and phosphates like it was, you know, nobody's business. So it took about two weeks or so for me to actually get to the levels that I want by dosing neophos and neonitro. Mm. So after making sure that I have uh, elevated nitrates and phosphates in my system, it was time to get as much biodiversity as possible. Uh, so first I dosed a bacterial product called Dr. Tim's uh, EcoBalance Probiotic Bacteria. So I dosed two times four ounce bottles in my 180 gallon system. And then I added about four six ounce bottles of live tiger pots. And uh, I did that uh, using the recommended way of adding them. So you add them at night, you turn off flow for a good uh, half an hour or so, uh, just to kind of let the pods settle. And uh, a week after I added the pods, I would add about half an ounce of live Fido Feast every day just to kind of uh, sustain the bot population. Uh, and then after that's done, it was time to essentially introduce silica to trigger a diatom bloom. That was kind of the final step in this multi-step process. And there are many ways to do this. People use uh, like water glass, I think is what's uh, the product that it's called. But uh, uh, for me, I did, I dumped an entire four ounce bottle of Brightwell, uh, Brightwell Aquatics uh, sponge excel, which is a type of silica. I just added it into the display. And then I kind of checked out. So the <laughs> tank at this point was looking really awful. Surprisingly, the SPS were still okay. I mean, they, they were not as colorful or anything, but they're still alive but everything else was just like different shades of brown, yucky brown and yucky green. It just, it looked really, really awful. So maybe a month or so after adding the silica, the sand started to clear up and I was like, yay, <laughs> it's working. Something is working. Uh, but just, <laughs> just when I thought things were improving, then my SPS just started like melting away. So I kid you not, I lost like 90% of my SPS collection <laughs> within the span of a week. So I was I was a bit confused because, you know, just as like the tank was looking better, the SPS started dying. That's like, it's a little bit weird. Uh, at that point, I had totally given up on any kind of manual testing because, you know, the tank has been looking like shit and I just kind of lost total motivation to work on it. Uh, so when I tested my water, it, it turns out that when the dinos and the diatoms died, then nothing was consuming all of the nitrates and phosphates that I was like dosing into the system. And when I tested my phosphates, there were like two, <laughs> two parts per million. So I'm laughing at this now, but because like I, I do this all the time, <laughs> whenever something painful happens, I, I just kind of laugh because it's better to laugh than to cry. But <laughs> yeah, uh, phosphates were two parts per million. Uh, that's a lot of phosphates. 
so then it took about like two to three weeks of me doing water changes to uh, bring the phosphates down to like 0.04 to 0.08 and just a few weeks ago i got some starter frags from uh, a friend uh, chi thank you man uh, so uh, just you know test out the system make sure that uh, it's going to sustain SPS before I go and, and start spending serious money on, on like a high-end SPS uh, if you're curious I did have a few SPS survive this whole ordeal uh, that includes the, the Digi Pink Lemonade uh, this unknown frag which is now totally brown uh, Pink Cadillac survived the Sunset Millie survived uh, this weird purple acro survived and refraf Wowser survived and I think this frag which is PC rainbow uh, also survived uh, everything else is just uh, new frags uh, mostly kind of just common stuff but I, I couldn't I couldn't resist I did get like an orange passion because it's my favorite acro uh, that's it so uh, you know it's been really challenging this tank has just been one problem after another uh, it seems like every time I think things are good then I start uh, you know spending some uh, money on frags uh, something awful happens right away <laughs> uh, maybe the cosmos is uh, giving me a lesson or telling me something <laughs> uh, but hopefully things will get better from here on out and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> knowing my luck you know I'm, I'm probably gonna get this new strand of super dinos that are like resistant to the atoms or some kind of crazy shit like that as soon as I publish this video <laughs> uh okay all right that's it guys so you know i'm still around thanks so much for checking in on me i appreciate all the comments and uh you asking to know what's happening with the tank uh hopefully things will continue to improve and i'll get a little bit more motivation to uh, uh to do more videos for you all uh but you know fingers crossed and uh, we'll see where it goes so thanks so much for watching have a good one and enjoy your reef see you later